This is the Armor 9, a rugged smartphone from Chinese manufacturer Ulophone. I know what you're thinking. A smartphone review on Maker's Muse? What's going on? Well, I'm hopeful this huge device could be the perfect phone for makers with a rugged waterproof design, huge battery life, and built-in thermal imaging camera, among other things. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. I first saw this device reviewed by Naomi over on her channel when they were running a Kickstarter for it and it instantly caught my attention as almost the antithesis of what other modern smartphones have become. Instead of making slight, fragile devices out of glass and metal, Ulophone is known for their rugged designs, but this one does a few more tricks than the others. Reviewing smartphones isn't something that happens very often on this channel. I want to be clear that I'm approaching this phone very firmly from a usability standpoint as a tool that's also a phone. So if you're chasing deep dive tech specs and processor benchmarks, you might want to look elsewhere. For the review, Ulophone sent over the device as well as an accessory case and an endoscope attachment. Yep, an endoscope. For real. We'll get to that in a little bit. It's pretty clear from the start what market Ulophone is targeting with the packaging. Definitely very different to the minimalist designer boxes of more familiar brands and rocking that construction yellow and aluminium tread plate vibe. In the box you'll get the phone, a curiously chunky SIM tool, a spare glass screen protector because this device already comes with one pre-installed, instructions, more instructions, more instructions, oh for the thermal camera, and a warranty card. You also get this funky red USB-C charge cable and mine came with an EU charger so that's useless to me. But they do also include USB-C adapters and a lanyard in case you're like somehow worried about dropping this phone for some reason. The first thing that strikes you about this device is just how massive it is. It towers over my old iPhone 6, measuring 168 by 82 millimeters, and well, he thick, 16 millimeters with nothing else, no case or anything, and it weighs a hefty 324 grams. It's probably the largest phone I've used in recent memory. The design of the phone for sure is polarizing, with huge rubberized corners over dark grey anodized aluminium sides and a raised plastic rim around the whole front's face to protect it, and this somehow accentuates the giant bezels even more. There's a notch for the camera, and on the back there's another huge slab of rubber and another raised rim that protects the camera array, but hey at least it doesn't have a camera bump, but it does have this lanyard point just jutting out the bottom which annoyingly prevents the phone from resting flat. In addition to the USB-C port, this phone has a headphone jack, yay, SD card slot, or you can use dual SIM if you like for expanding the 128 gigabyte onboard memory, and all of these ports are sealed against water and dirt ingress with rubber stoppers, or in the case of the SD and SIM tray, it's a metal tray that requires the use of that unusually thick SIM tool, remember, to lever it open. Don't try to use your finger now here, you'll just break it. Now having a waterproof device is fantastic, but I have to say opening and closing this USB-C grommet for charging every night is a real pain and I feel it's gonna break off sooner rather than later, which will probably make the phone no longer waterproof. So most nights I actually just put it on the bedside table and don't bother charging it. Why? Well, the battery in this phone is a monster, 6,600 milliamp hour. To see just how far this will get me, I charged up one night and then just went about my day. And then the next day, and the next. This phone easily got me three days of regular use and didn't seem to slow down. This means you could pretty much just watch YouTube all day and not worry about finding a charger. And it even works as a battery bank for lesser, more puny battery phones, which is just crazy. Like almost every other modern phone, this one has a fingerprint scanner mounted on its side, and while it works fine and it's pretty fast, it's totally useless to me. This is because it's probably the first phone where I've realized there's actually severe usability differences 
if you're left-handed, which I am. Check it out. My fingers just fumble over where the scanner is and trigger it too many times and then it locks the scanner out. But even if you're right-handed, it's unusually low to get your thumb onto it and it's easy to miss. So I'm not quite sure they didn't put it at the top on the side here and the SIM tray lower. You can unlock with the front camera and your face if you like though, but well, that isn't really secure at all, but it sure is convenient. Now, I'm more focused on the usability of this phone as a tool for makers, but I will go over specs quickly. It has eight gigabytes of RAM and the Helio P90 octa-core chipset. This device feels nice and snappy with what I think is a fairly stock implementation of Android 10. It has a 1080 by 2340 pixel IPS display and it has really good clarity and viewing angles and it can go really bright so it's perfectly readable outdoors. Decent specs all around, but it's certainly no crazy flagship or one of those crazy gaming phones with 240 hertz refresh display screens and such. But can your gaming phone do this? Let's be real, the main reason people are going to be buying this phone is for the built-in thermal imaging sensor from Fleur. Back in 2017, I bought this ruggedized phone, the Cat 60, which as far as I know was the first smartphone to pack a built-in thermal sensor, but the device was so slow and gutless, it was almost unusable. This though, it does what I had always hoped. The sensor is accessed through the MyFlow app, which has a few handy modes such as photo, video, time-lapse, and curiously, the ability to stream direct to YouTube. I don't know where this would be useful, but it's pretty crazy. When in video mode, the sensor does stutter on occasion, but overall, it's an incredibly useful tool for all kinds of applications. For example, in this shot, you can see heat from outside creeping into a room due to poor insulation. Something I had never noticed before till I pointed the flur at it. A lot of people are actually confused as to the actual sensor in this phone, so I reached out to Ulophone to confirm which one it is, and they said it's the Fleur Lepton 2.5, which has an 80 by 60 pixel resolution, which is then overlaid over the regular camera image sensor and they do overlay the images. So it's not crazy high resolution like some of the more commercial flow implementations, but it's really decent considering this whole device is under $500 US. The main shooter isn't too bad either. It's a 64 megapixel Samsung sensor, which is kind of marketing wank, but it's fairly capable. I got some good shots out of it. It does have some sort of AI built in, but don't expect crazy AI enhanced photos like you'd get off a Google Pixel or an iPhone. It doesn't really hold up to those flagships, but I felt the photo quality was more than enough for my day-to-day -day use. One thing I will mention here is by default, it has this stupid watermark, which it puts on your phones to be like, oh, I was taken with, with an Armour 9. Who would ever want that? But thankfully you can disable it in the settings. There's other modes in the camera app like night and both but they aren't all that great because again it's basically all down to the post processing not so much the sensor these days and even my two-year-old Find X my Oppo Find X takes way better artificial bokeh shots than this one does and unfortunately as you can see the rear camera for video is just garbage um, especially that focusing every time you move it like blips in it's just no good <laughs> The front facing camera is a basic five megapixel affair, but it also has this other setting called face cute. I do feel face cute. Okay, let's check out that endoscope attachment. You can already buy USB endoscopes for smartphones for quite cheap, it's nothing new. But this is the first phone to, of my knowledge to have a dedicated mounting system for one. And this one is also IP67 rated, which means it can be submerged in up to a meter of water for up to an hour without damage. It has a tiny array of white LEDs for illumination and a tiny screwdriver and fasteners for attaching to the phone, which I feel will get lost pretty much instantly. It's really kind of fiddly to attach, which is a little bit disappointing. I was hoping it would just snap in place and then be able to just unclip quickly, but there it is. So let's test it out. <laughs> just kidding, here's a better use case. This is my 89 Toyota Corolla, sex spec. It's a project car I've been tinkering away with for a little while, and I figured it's the perfect test for this phone's features. It drips dirty looking oil, and I'm not sure if it's from the previous leaks I've already fixed or others I'm yet to find. So let's use this endoscope to take a look. Now I had really high hopes for this endoscope, but I have to say it's pretty terrible. It's only HD, so 720p. The frame rate is so low that it's just almost always blurry because it's so small, it does move just a little bit. 
and because the frame rate is like 9.5 frames a second or something, it just always seems to blur. And on top of that, there always seems to be lens aberrations, flares, and just bad optics all around. And this is a real blow to me because I was really hoping this would be good and actually useful, but you can barely make out the oil filter here, let alone any leaks and where I should be looking to work on my car. But let's just say in some ridiculous universe, this phone still isn't rugged enough for you. Well, check out the case. This thing takes an already huge device and makes it just plain massive. Made from rubberized plastic, it adds such girth that I can barely hold onto the device with it on. The giant clip and carabiner included seems to suggest it's for mounting the device in extreme environments, but not something I'm going to daily with. That's for sure. However, even without the case, there's no denying this phone is massive. So who is it even aimed at? Well, as I mentioned, I've been after a rugged phone with good features as a maker and thermal imaging since I tried the Cat 60 a few years ago and I was left wanting more. I stuck with that phone for a year, but I found the poor battery life, unusable camera and sluggish user experience made me actually step backwards to my iPhone 6 from 2014 until I upgraded eventually to the Oppo two years ago. And honestly, most people will stick to phones like this, flagship devices that are powerful, made from delicate but pretty glass. But if you want a device that won't explode after you drop it once onto concrete from your pocket, then maybe a rugged device is more your thing. Billiphone essentially released the Armor 9e, which is a cheaper version of this device with identical specs, but it lacks the thermal camera. And if you're just after a rugged phone, that might be for you. But that, however, doesn't excite me as much as this device does. For a certain range of people who work outdoors or in brutal, wet and messy environments, this phone is going to be perfect for them. I was brainstorming a few random ideas where this device and its range of features like a thermal imaging camera could be legit handy. And these are just a few industries and uses I thought of. Having something this powerful in your pocket is a pretty big game changer. And I'm sure there's many more I haven't even thought of. Some of the usability choices are questionable, like the attachment method for the endoscope, leaving the pins open during normal use, don't like that. And the inconvenient fingerprint scanner means I just don't use it. And this damn shortcut button could be so useful. All I wanted to do is use it to take the photos, like be the shutter release button, but it has to be volume down. I can't reprogram it. I can just make it open the photo app. So that's a little annoying. It might be improved in future firmware updates. But here's the big question. Will I stick with this phone? Will I daily this massive phone, the Armor 9? Well, I think so. I'm gonna stick with it for at least a few months and I might give you guys a quick update after that. I'll be honest, even though it's huge it's, and it's a little bit chungus, it's not too obtrusive in your pocket. Um, but you'll definitely notice it if you like to wear skinny jeans or have shallow pockets, that's for sure. If you'd like to pick up an Armor 9, there's links in the video description and full disclosure, Ulophone sent me this phone free of charge for purpose of review. And this video has been my own opinion and thoughts with no copy approval given. If you wanna learn more about this device, I highly recommend going and checking out Naomi's review of it because she also has experience with other modern rugged smartphones and their various quirks and features. And if you enjoy this video, maybe consider subscribing. Again, don't expect phone reviews very often on this channel, but it's my aim here on Makers Muse to empower your creativity through technology. And I thought this device fitted that criteria nicely. Thanks for watching guys, bye.